So the two types of shoulder replacements are anatomic shoulder replacements and reverse shoulder replacements. And the decision is really based on the quality of the rotator cuff muscles. When people have good rotator cuff muscles, I think it's ideal to do an anatomic shoulder replacement because it can give you better function and a better strength. But when somebody has a torn or weak rotator cuff, an anatomic shoulder replacement may be disappointing for patients. So in that situation, I think it's better to do a reverse shoulder replacement. To give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about, the rotator cuff are a group of muscles, this is a right shoulder, that forms a cuff of tissue coming off the shoulder blade and holds the arm in place. By holding the arm in place, when the arm moves, the ball is centered on the socket. When somebody has a torn rotator cuff, the arm can come up out of the socket. So in an arthritic shoulder where we've lost cartilage, you're in a bone-on-bone -bone situation, and that's what causes pain. So to help get rid of the bone-on-bone -bone situation, we remove the ball and replace the ball with a metal ball and replace the socket with a plastic socket. And that's what gets rid of the pain from bone-on-bone -bone arthritis. But if you don't have a good rotator cuff, the arm can slide all over the place. And in that situation, an anatomic regular shoulder replacement like this isn't a great option. So when somebody has a weak rotator cuff, it's better to do a reverse shoulder replacement where the socket's on this side, the ball's on this side, and at the end of the procedure as you pull things together, it locks into place. And the design of the prosthesis is what gives the shoulder stability that the rotator cuff typically would provide. So when somebody doesn't have a strong rotator cuff to provide stability to the shoulder joint, a reverse shoulder replacement is a good option for those people.